Uh, now we're going to go straight over to our next guest, and she is uh, Sister Farah Roslan, an award-winning surgeon in training at Northampton General Hospital, who recently helped introduce a disposable, get this right, a disposable Fantastic. surgical hijab in collaboration <laughs> with the Royal Derby Hospital. Assalamu alaikum, Sister so, Farah. Sh should we call you doctor <laughs> or sir? What, what, what should we call you? Because I don't think sister is appropriate. Wa alaikum salam, firstly. Um, secondly, just call me Farah. It's it's really fine. Yes, but are, are you not a doctor yet? Are you still on the? Are you still in the studies at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I've graduated three years ago. Um, it's my first year of surgical training. Right. Um, so yeah. And is that Filthy all types of surgery? Is that all types of surgery? Are you specialising in something? Um, so, um, like, I'm training at the moment for just um, general surgery themed mm. training. Um, I don't really have to make up my mind up yet, uh, but I'm leaning towards, you know, probably general slash colorectal surgery. Inshallah. Inshallah. Now, look, I mean, you know, the, the amount of, of, all, of all awards that I can see here are just quite phenomenal. <laughs> so, first of all, congratulations, and I've got to get this right, on winning the Nottingham Foundation Doctor of the Year Award. Right, Ooh, and the Medi Sequel NHS Leadership Academy Award, and being nominated for the Bishop Muslim Award. So there's, there's a whole host of things going here, mashallah. When when you were studying, um, you know, is that something you thought that you might? I mean, obviously nobody looks for awards, but you mm -hmm. know, get into that level, alhamdulillah, of accolades, mashallah. Is that is that? I mean, because obviously you no. must be an excellent student. Um. Well. Um. No, I never, I never dreamed or thought of, you know, getting award. Um, I think my motto or my, you know, um, life phrase is probably just, you know, try your best, try and do your best every day, and inshallah, it will be a good day, and then it will turn into a good week, and inshallah, it'll turn into a good year. Um, and um, yeah, no, I don't really, I never really sought for an award as well. Um, and I think the first award that I won was the Nottingham Foundation um, Doctor of the Year Award. And I was um, I was working and I was fasting. It was Ramadan. It was my first oh, so year wow. um, of, of working in um, Queen's Medical Center um, mm. at that time. Um, and I just I just opened my email and I, I um, was told that I was nominated by one of the consultants. And, you know, hey, ho, um, um, I, uh, you know, I came to the ceremony and I didn't really expect to win because, you know, mm. there were quite mm. fierce co competition. And alhamdulillah, I won. Uh, and I was um, also the first female um, Muslim to have had the award. Fantastic. Mashallah, and, mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah. Out of all those awards and all those accolades, um, you have come out. Now, I'm, I'm going to jump straight onto this. I do apologize. I'm really intrigued about this. Disposable surgical hijab, please enlighten us. <laughs> yeah, so when I was a medical student, um, I had some difficulties going to theatre because I re I'm not really sure what to expect. And people see it sometimes as um, an infection control issue. Yeah, right. um, yeah. And, and that apparently has led to some women choose, choosing not to go into surgery or even as a medical student not to go into operating theatre to learn um, just because, um, you know, they think they might be pulled out or because of these difficulties wearing, um, you know, hijab in theatre. I just didn't feel like that was right because you shouldn't need to choose between a career, a specific career, for example, in surgery. True, having to wear your hijab. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, and I thought, you know, why not go with something in between? Um, and that's where the idea of disposable surgical hijab And of course, I mean, look, the, the gowns that the surgeons wear, they're disposable. The gloves are disposable. Why not exactly. the hijab? 100%. Exactly. And I'm assuming and, and I'm itself, hoping... It's a disposable that, that, hat. So you just have to make a longer version. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, 100%. 100%. You're, you're 100% right. And I'm hoping that there's some accolade or an award for that as well. Because that's, it's a simple idea, so obvious... But for someone to come up with it, alhamdulillah, takes a bit of better thinking and also being involved in practically. Look, when you, as a student and a, and a Muslim woman, you know, being nominated for the awards, and you mentioned that you were the first to receive the, the particular award of Nottingham Foundation Doctor of the Year, it must, and, and I know that we, we all don't stand up to become role models, but it must, alhamdulillah, have a massive impact on other students around you to see, you know what, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, uh, and, and I, 
I, I, like you said, you know, you never really intend to become the trendsetter or, you know, be mm-hmm. trail, you know, um, razor or something. But I suppose when you make that first step and you make yourself obvious and visible and, you know, the next, you know, Muslim women or, you know, um, I, men, even boys, when they look at me and then they're like, OK, if she can, then maybe I can, too, because you can't really be something that you cannot see. Yeah. So I think it. Even if people can't really relate to the disposable hijab, I guess just seeing like a female Muslim figure out there, you know, for example, in surgery, I think just opens up that um, that path or, you know, it just shows that, you know, diversity exists mm-hmm. and representation yeah. matters. Um, at least it does that, I feel, you know, even if they're not into surgery. Or well, surely, I mean, it's not yeah, just about it's not just about the surgical element, but certainly for women who wear yeah. the hijab to have the right to be able to wear it and that it shouldn't be something that should prevent them from falling, exactly. getting into a career or doing a job. Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree. You have disposable <laughs> beards as yes. well. Because sometimes you mention there's a certain job you can't have the beards. So we need to look at that's that as true. well at some point. That's true. Um, Maybe a Velcro one. <laughs> and look, you know, how, how much does that open up to the hijab, prayer, and the other facets, fasting in Ramadan. I mean, look, yeah. for, for example, I know that, uh, that there's the argument that if you're in a certain profession, fasting could prevent you from, you know, carrying out that skill. You know, as a surgeon, you've got to be very precise. You know, how, yes, how about the other facets of Islam? Has that been something that yeah. you've started to look at as well now? Yeah. Um, well, it's something I definitely thought about. I mean, I mean, Islam is a way of life. So mm-hmm. um, you never just you're never just a Muslim, you know, at home or, you know, sure. or at public space or at the mosque. You know, you're, you're in Islam when you wake up, you go to shower, you eat, you work, you come home, you sleep. You're a Muslim altogether. Sure. So I don't really compartmentalize religion in such a way. Mm-hmm. So, um, for example, like when it comes to fasting, Alhamdulillah, it's my third year of a doctor, of being a doctor now. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, I think it, um, I can only thank Allah, really, because um, I've made up my mind. Um, and I know sometimes, you know, I'm working 13 hours a day and sometimes seven days a week. And Alhamdulillah, I've never missed like a day um, of fasting. Um, and, that, that's, um, and I think that has some that has to do a lot with um, what you put into your mind really um, and and then the strength will come from Allah inshallah um, and I do try to make it a point to you know the junior doctors as well if they need help you know the NHS is trying to be a lot more inclusive nowadays especially with regards to religious sensitivities mm-hmm. if you say that you need a break then go for a break you know your limit you I think what's important is that when you wake up in the morning and you go for example it's Ramadan and you want to fast just um uh, make an intention. I think intention matters the most. Mm-hmm. You know, make an intention that you're going to try your best and fast for the whole day, even if it's in summer, even if it's 19 or 21 hours <laughs> and, and, and you're on call, just make an intention that you're going to get through it and pray that Allah gives you the strength. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and be kind to yourself as well. Like if you think that, you know, your, um, your judgment is cloudy, you can't make safe decisions, then tell yourself, okay, I'm going to make a break because <coughs> I need to prioritize patient safety. And I'm doing that also because I'm a good Muslim and also because I want to please Allah. Um, and, you know, inshallah, Allah will make it easy for I mean, you. And alhamdulillah, I never had to break my fast. On that note, Bilal, I don't alhamdulillah. know about you, right? But we as British Muslims are not really confident. Right? <laughs> uh, is there, is there something to be said here that Malaysia Muslims <laughs> are really confident? Because some of the innovations, their outlook is it, very yeah. different from British Muslims, to be honest. We're, we're not really as confident uh, you know, we, we see that in Hajj, you know, you, you've seen it, we've yep. seen, you know, the organization, mm-hmm. the confidence of going in and doing what they have to do. Is there a <laughs> massive cultural outlook and difference between Malaysians and, and British Muslims? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really tough question because I never actually thought about it. <laughs> um, but I'm not, I'm not sure whether... Um, being born in a Muslim majority, um, you know, country and, and, you know, being raised up. And I think it, it has something to do with a lot of about, you know, um, 
the way I was raised up as well. Mm. Um, like, for example, like my 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 father never really treated me as different to like my brother, for example. Sure. Like, yeah. you know, if he sends my brother to swimming lessons, I'm going to get swimming lessons too. And yeah, I'm going to wear a cap and like a swimming cap and I'll swim too. There's never really a barrier about, you know, how I dress or my gender. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, my mom's quite, I, I don't really think it's necessarily a cultural thing because a lot of Malaysians are actually pretty shy as well. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, we, yeah, and respecting elderly um, and about not voicing out um, our mm. concerns and not speaking up, you know, not over talking the elders. I think, I think Malaysians can be pretty shy, but I think particularly probably with the way I was brought up, um, you know, because, um, you know, my mom's, uh, my mom is, um, she holds one of the, you know, biggest position um, of, you know, banking in, in Malaysia as well. You know, she's a, she's a go-getter. She's, um, she's almost 55 and she travels, she commutes about two, two hours daily. Wow. To and fro. Home. 55 um, yeah, and she's still she's still going um we you can know, tell the apple I'm hasn't fallen far from the tree there isn't it <laughs> i think i have a i have an amazing role model and i yeah. think that's prop, that's my mom absolutely um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could tell you've got that kind of that, that robustness. To, certainly your intentions are very clear. You're doing some good work, so martial art. I just want to sort of uh, jump back to um, the stuff that you've innovated. You, you've, you've come up with the, first of all, the disposable surgical hijab. And secondly, we've seen that you've, you've also produced a, a multi-level uh, escalation guide uh, to Muslim doctors who may, may be experiencing some form of Islamophobia. Um, could you just give us a bit of a brief about that, please? Mm, yeah, so um, I did not, firstly, I did not come up with this alone. And I think this is true for every kind of like innovation or achievement that I had. It's never just me by myself. Um, with the multi-level escalation guide, um, you know, for, you know, Muslim doctors, that was actually an idea coined by uh, Dr. Iman Wiley, or, um, and she's a microbiologist consultant. I really have to mention her because she plays sure. a really yeah. big and important role for the surgical hijab and also for... Um, the Islamophobia guide. Um, and uh, we basically looked at a few reports and papers publishing that, you know, uh, Muslim doctors out of all of peoples of all faith experienced the most, uh, you know, reported the most uh, discrimination, basically. Um, there's actually an intersection of um, being Muslim um, out of all faith, being sure. female yeah. out of both genders, mm. and being oh. non-white. So uh, it's called B- BAMI, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, sure. um, out of all races that experience the most discrimination. Um, um, and we figured that we needed to do something about this because because once we see the data, we can't just keep quiet about it. Um, and um, and I've I've always been you know quite passionate about inclusivity, diversity, and especially mm-hmm. putting Muslims out there as well. Because sometimes you know we rather just brush things off and then deal with it, you know, behind closed doors. But sure. you know I I I really just want to put it out there. You know, there's a problem and we need to solve it and we need to fix it. And we need to do something about it. And Muslims themselves cannot wait until other people help us to do something if we have an issue we also need to be at the forefront of trying to address that problem basically mm-hmm. well, um, course, so I mean, that's how the guidance came about sure i mean especially the fact that the nhs particularly deals with a very diverse range of customers and clients and patients so you know, you, you need to make sure that all those things are in place now look this what this next point i mean you haven't taken up the post here because of your mm-hmm. exam it's the yeah. director of hijab and bare below elbow of yeah. Bima. Tell us about that. Yeah. What, what, what does that actually mean? Bare below elbow. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, um, bare below elbow is, you know, introduced, um, uh, I believe, in 2007 um, as part of, you know, infection prevention measure, um, uh, because basically they think that if you have anything below the elbow, then it will impede with hand washing Ah. and you can carry and transmit that infection when you see one patient to another. Another, basically. Um, But obviously, when you look at it from a religious point of view, Muslim women have to cover their forearm. Yeah. And that can cause some problems. Um, But when the guidance was first introduced in 2007, none of 
safety consideration was taken of course into not. account. Of course not. Yeah. Um, and um, so, and Muslim women, because of their preference to cover their forearm in the hospital, mm. has then became an uh, an object of target, basically, because we're very <laughs> visible with the way we dress, with the hijab, mm -hmm. and the, and the forearm covering makes us visibly Muslim and easily targeted uh, it, and it becomes a source of well uh, and it, like oh yeah a source of discrimination we really, don't really want to say it that way but it, it, it is true yeah, so it's, it's one of the most commonly reported complaints. Um, yeah, so basically from BIMA point of view which is the British Islamic Medical Association we're trying to find ways around that for like for example allowing for arm covering when you're not with patients like for example if you're just working in front of the computer you don't really have to expose yeah, your entire yeah. forearm we don't need that blanket rule um or providing disposable forearms um things like that mm -hmm. um yeah I and there, there is a and kind of a, we spoke about it quite a lot yeah yeah there, there is a, a, a certain theme i can see that's kind of rolling out here you've definitely waving the flag for the sisters and the muslims alike you've, you've got the disposable hijab you've got the multi-level escalation you've got the bare below elbow thing going um what was the feedback you're getting at the moment with this kind of these kind of innovative ideas because i can imagine that as a muslim community we're going through usual yeah. struggles as it is so can you yeah. tell us a bit about the feedback you're getting back from all these uh, uh, these these things that you're coming up with yeah um they're mainly positive alhamdulillah um but i guess mainly because um it has been an issue for a long time and i think people are just too shy or maybe because we feel like we're outnumbered mm. and that you know we don't really talk about it um so i feel like i'm just suddenly became that person who just speaks about these things that this mm. is a problem yeah. and we need to do something about it um so so yeah and that's been you know quite well received um you know from the muslim and non-muslim communities as well sure. mm -hmm. uh, um uh, some of my um i i even introduced um a job in my previous trust um that's in lincolnshire and and that was um, and that was because it was COVID. So the hijab, the disposable hijab, wasn't just worn in operating theater. Um, mm. We they they provided it in A and E, uh, in okay. emergency wow. department, yeah. in ITU settings because of COVID. Because we don't we're we're yeah. we're dealing with suspected COVID patients, and they want to. You know they want to cover their. Uh, they don't want to wear the same hijab. Um, of you know course. to yeah, work yeah. and you know going back from work sure. to home. They don't want to bring the infection home. So they pr they provide a disposable hijab. And actually, um, my initiative was written up in a case report, and that was then uploaded by the NHS um, inclusivity and improvement. Um, and so that so those are the things that were quite well received, you know, not just locally, but, you know, nationally and perhaps even internationally. Inshallah. Fantastic. Mashallah. Doc, moving on, what's the future hold for you? <laughs> well, um, I'm training to be a surgeon, so hopefully, hey, inshallah, inshallah. Um, you know, Allah will make it easy for me. Inshallah. Um, inshallah. And um, I quite like leadership and management as well. Um, so I'll probably do something. I don't and, know, a and are you, are you hoping to make that. are you hoping to make UK your home? Are you going to go back to Malaysia or somewhere else <laughs> in the world? What what's the target? Well, I'm married um, to a I'm Malaysian there. doctor who also works in the UK. Okay, oh, wow. I'm <laughs> so you're staying there. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so I think we're going to be here for quite some time. Yeah, um, but whether or not to settle here, um, you know. For, Permanently, I think that's still in discussion. In discussion. Well, look, Jazakum Allah Khairan for your fantastic work. Uh, yeah. May Allah grant you success, inshallah. Amen. Keep up the brilliant work. And you know what? It's, it's, it's all about the struggle, isn't it? You just got to carry on. You, and it's not just for Muslims, generally for society. We just got to carry on for each other. Inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to the show You're as well. Very welcome. Very welcome. It's a pleasure. Jazakum Allah Khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.